Okay. Hi, my name is Tuche Tari Roth, and I'm the assistant director of the WPTA uh, amateur piano competition. And I have another guest today. His name is Thomas Kane. Hi, Tom. Oh, hi, Tuche. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing good, thank you. Uh, where are you located? I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. Well, United States. Yes, wonderful. Okay, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself, where you are, um, how old you are, and uh, now I know where you're now. Um, if you've done competitions before, how long you've been playing piano? Right, yeah. Um, well, I'm 51 years old. I, uh, I've been playing the piano. I, I started um, when I was about seven years old. I played for a couple of years then, and uh, I had some eye strain, and I needed to you know, I got involved in sports and other things, but I, I kind of refound my old love of piano. I took it up as an adult a few years back uh, when I was living in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I took it up again uh, three years, about two and a half years back in St. Louis. So uh, something that's been ongoing throughout my life that I'm just kind of, uh, you know, rediscovering in my adulthood. That's wonderful. And you take private lessons once a week or do you just... One, once a week, right, with Q Butler in, uh, in St. Yes. Louis. Yes, that's right. Yes. And how, is this the first time that you're doing the competition? This is the first time anything of this, you know, magnitude. I, I did uh, the Arch Cup, which was a local St. Louis competition uh, the last two years, um, you know, last two falls. It comes in October. So this is really, and then I did uh, one over at Lindenwood University. It's a local, uh, you know, university in the, in the area of Charles, Missouri. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's, that's basically my contest experience. Okay, yes. wonderful. But this is probably the first time you're doing an international competition. This is international. international. This is my first international one. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Well done. <laughs> and um, why do you do competitions? Is it to keep yourself motivated? Yeah, I think it's exciting uh, to stay motivated, have something to work towards. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also nice to be involved in learning, uh, getting to exposed to different art created by other you know, artists. And uh, so it inspires me to want to try to learn something I hear somebody else play or you know, that sort of thing. So I think it's kind of this uh, synergy and uh, it, it's very positive for me to do that. Very nice. And why did you pick up piano again? I mean, you, you said that you wanted to uh, get back to something that you used to do, but is there any other intrinsic uh, reasons why you picked up just piano in particular? Well, I, I'm, I'm always like, I started out in the graphic arts. That was my first thing, you know, growing up in high school and, uh, um, you, know, if I, you know, first venture into the arts but then you know i, I just i had music i, I got that planted in me at the young age that interest and that love and i uh you know i, I watched uh, the scott joplin uh the entertain you know the the what's called um the sting you know with, with the scott joplin music and uh that got me kind of you know thinking about it again and i watched mozart uh uh the you know amadeus and uh just I, I think i was doing artwork at the time listening to that in the background and it got me thinking you know that I really like to create in that way too. And there's, you know, musical sounds have colors to them and uh, the emotions and you can create that atmosphere. And, uh, you know, some of the traveling I've done, um, you know, kind of, I, uh, right now I've been doing a lot of Grieg um, and I, I kind of, I went to Scandinavia one time with work and it just kind of the, kind of the, the romanticism, the magic in it, uh, it just, you know, it kind of evoked these different feelings and different cultures and things like that with the music. So it's kind of a magical uh, thing for me, you know, like, uh, I'm an engineer by trade, and uh, you know I think I kind of like some of the mathematical, uh, the counting of it. You know, the Bach. You know, it's got a beautiful symmetry to it, and uh, yes. So there's you know a lot of things are informing that, but uh, you know it's great to be back into it. That's wonderful. That's really great. And do you mostly play classical music, or I mean, I know you said ragtime, uh, Scott Joplin, and and you probably also play that to relax or to learn something different. But mostly, do you play classical music? It's mostly been classical lately. I've done a little, you know, a, Chopin, a couple Chopin preludes. Uh, this is Bach's 250th birthday year, so I learned for Elise the full, you know, uh, part. And uh, um, you know, like I like I say, you know, the classical. I, it's something that got introduced to me a little later. I, I, you know, like I was playing some of the, the ragtime when I was a teenager, and but I, you know, I took the formal lessons again as an adult, and uh, you know, Chopin really appealed to me the romanticism, mm -hmm. and like the Joplin, I like the. Uh, the solace was one of my favorite pieces to learn in that. Uh, it had kind of a, a, a tango kind of feeling to it, you know, and I was learning some tango dance at the time and it kind of, uh, you know, and I, the industrial aspect, I'm from big cities like Chicago and, you know, it just, it, it kind of 
spoke to me on that level too. But just it's it's all beautiful. And uh, in the future, you know, I'd like to learn some uh, some more Grieg and then uh, maybe even some Gershwin. There's some challenging preludes that might be something you know down the road for me. Okay. Anyway, yeah, well, sounds wonderful. Um, it, what are the frustrations that you have when you try to practice? Oh gosh, so that's a good one because you know I work a, a, a nine to five, you know nine to five job during the week uh, or seven thirty to you know four well, anyway, but it's a, a full time job. So I guess uh, you know having the energy at the end of the day, uh, you know discipline to sit down with the piano and you know and, and practice. And uh, but it's kind of like a way to relax and it's kind of something different. It uses a different part of your mind, a different part of your spirit than what you're doing at work. So it's kind of it's, it's relaxing and you know recharging in a way too. So. You know, it takes some dedication to sit down and do that, but uh, it's, it's very well worth it. And, it, you know, it kind of, you know, makes, makes a, it kind of brings your mood up so nice if you've had a little bit, you're too busy and uh, stressed out and, you know, to escape into the piano a little bit. Yeah. It's very tactile and it's uh, something, you know, nice to create with. And how long can you practice per day? That's good. I mean, the teacher recommends that it's good to do it consistently rather than in big, you know, blocks. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I try to do that consistently every evening. Uh, sometimes, you know, like for a half an hour each night or something like that, sometimes I end up putting a lot of it towards a few days in the weekend too, you know, when I, when I have time, if things come up during the week, but, uh, but yeah, you know, that consistency is what's important and, uh, it, you know, it's, it's a pleasure to do it, you know, and you, have to make, you need to make the time to do it. And do you also think that by playing the piano, we do contribute, even though you don't perform for other people, let's say, even maybe you do, but let's say you don't perform, you just play for yourself, but do you still think that you contribute to the world in a way by playing the piano? Yeah, I think, you know, you're connecting with kind of a, a collective um, unconscious or something. There's just all these other people on that same, you know, wavelength. You feel like you're part of something bigger and, uh, you know, maybe it'll, it'll give you some insights. Like you say, you're exploring uh, music from different cultures and maybe you'll have a more appreciation for you know people in different parts of the world and maybe you know I, I'd like to travel and maybe someday I'll want to go to visit some of these places mm. you know too. Yeah it sounds wonderful actually and um, do you have a specific goal for yourself to achieve maybe in a few years or a playing goal or a repertoire goal? Like yeah like I say um, you know right now I've been doing some of uh, some of the Bach and I'd like to work my well, way up to you know be, can, uh, be able to play some of the invention, not the invention, the, uh, the well-tempered clavier. I just think that's gorgeous, all those voices intertwined. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I played the first prelude and I've experimented with some of the ones out of the book too, but I'd like to you know, build myself up with the, the inventions, the symphonias, and uh, you know, get to a very, uh, you know, very adept at doing that. And also, like I say, the, the, the Gershwin, I've always liked his music. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think, uh, I think that, and, and like I said, the, 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 the Grieg, uh, the Solveig song, I just found that was beautiful. I got a pianist magazine, I listened to that, uh, that CD that comes with it, heard that, and just thought that was one of the most beautiful things. And uh, so I've been working on the first half of that, and uh, you know, I like to continue to develop that piece too. So yeah, there's a lot of exciting things. So much music, so little time, you know. I know, so. the piano repertoire is so big that you can, you can spend your entire life trying to learn it and you can never play everything that's written for the piano. Right. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. I think it's also fascinating because we have such a rich uh, resources for us. So we have, I mean, not every instrument has that. A lot of instruments actually do arrangements of piano music or other other music. Right, right. We're actually quite spoiled <laughs> when it comes yeah, to yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the options that we actually have. Well, I heard you say that you were subscribed to the piano magazine. Is this the, the pianist or the piano magazine? There are a couple of different ones. I believe it's called Pianist Magazine. It's out of Great Britain. Mm -hmm. And uh, they come with a CD and they have like 40 pages of sheet music in the center of it, which is always okay. a nice, you know. Is there anything else that you're subscribed to that you to, to actually keep yourself with the loop? Oh gosh, well I listen to a lot of YouTube videos. I go on there, like this year is in the, the Beethoven year. So I've listened to um, the, the Waldenstein. Uh, mm -hmm. I really love that, you know, just the, the excitement it creates. And uh, so, you know, maybe exploring that. And I've got some friends who are in, in piano. I've got a couple who teach piano actually. And uh, it's nice touching base with them. And, uh, you know, another, another composer I like is Ravel. You know the watercolorness to it, the kind of impressionistic sense of that. You know, and uh, and some of those whole tone scales. And, and I'm a little interested in the music there. I don't know a ton of it, but I'm interested in it. I'd like to, you know, pursue that, understand the structure of how music is made a little more. 
but uh, you know, the modal music and, and all that, you know, just those uh, the things, the feelings that can evoke with those different, you know, structures. And uh, mm -hmm. so, but you know, it, it just, it's, it's amazing. And I want to get more involved with music this spring and also some uh, visual arts, get more into that too. So okay, yeah. great. <laughs> I digressed a little bit, but. Uh, <laughs> well, it, it, knowing the structure of the music also helps your playing and memorization. So then you can visualize everything in your head a lot better. So it's actually. Sure, practice. right, right, exactly. What, yeah. are, what are the hardest components of um, learning a piece you think? Do you have most trouble with uh, reading the notes or, or is it memorizing? Is it, is it the technique or the expression of music or understanding the piece? What is it that's, uh, that, let's say, troubles you when you practice the most? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, there's a lot of challenges in it. I think it's kind of like a puzzle that you, know, you, you learn the hands alone then you put them together and um, you want to get to that point where you've got kind of the technical part under control and you can start really putting the artistry into it. And uh, so that's a good question. I, I think um, I think there can be some very, you know, not a lot of note pieces that take a lot of, uh, you know, that artistry part is very important, you know, each, each, to give each one its due, each note and, and really have it, uh, uh, articulated and uh, so that, that's kind of a neat thing. I played a piece, you know, this spring for a for, for a kind of a master class, and it, it was a Scarlatti um, mm -hmm. part of his, you know, uh, and it, it didn't have a lot of notes, but it was a really the emotions it, it created, and my teacher was very pleased with the way that I interpreted, you know. But it, it took a lot of time to get that, and uh, so sometimes the seemingly ones, uh, you know, don't have a lot of chords, a lot of fast passages. They can be you're really reading a lot into it and to play it you know well it, it takes a lot of work so i think that part uh something i want to continue to do I, you know I, like i so i feel if i get the notes down there's, there's a lot more to go after that point and uh but i'm still at the stage where i'm trying to get the notes down on a lot of them so anyway yeah right right well putting in the time also helps of course and then you can also analyze the piece or um, you can, uh, sometimes I also, uh, my, if I give examples from myself, I, I also practice um, without the piano. Uh, so I just look at the music and in, I try to hear, hear it in my head and oh, that wow. and I visualize it. And that's something that actually um, speeds up my memorization. That's awesome, yeah. Okay, so Didn't Rachmaninoff play the piano when he was coming over on the ship, like some kind of silent piano or something where he was imagining the sounds in his head, you know? <laughs> I heard something like that when he was composing one of those, you know, piano concerts. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> well, Beethoven too, and, and he started actually losing his hearing in his 20s. Wow. And then by the time he was, uh, how many years later? I mean, slowly he was just losing his, his hearing. Yeah, so when yeah. he, he actually um, wrote Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, his last symphony, he couldn't hear at all. So oh, wow, yeah, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also yeah. think it's fascinating. Is there anything that you'd like to ask a concert pianist? Ask the concert pianist. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's. Uh, um, I think I think performing is something that you know, I'm growing into. That you know, it takes some time to get very comfortable doing that. Uh, um, what do you most you know? You you have a great command of the technique and the repertoire and everything. When you go on stage, what are you most thinking about or most you know that? Uh, you know what 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 uh, what's the biggest challenge for a concert pianist going there? You know what are they? most nervous about, you know, maybe. Okay, well, and I would say from my experience, I think we're not too different, you and I. It's just that I, I have more degrees, more experience than I just do in the professional level. But we have the same fears, same thoughts. <laughs> and we also get a little bit nervous before playing. Uh, so what what I personally try to do is, um, I would, I would have uh, before, I mean, especially the, the week before I play, I would do yoga daily, 15 minutes, 20 oh. minutes. So if I physically feel better, I will also play better. So I really try yeah. to put some time to, to feel more uh, flexible physically and uh -huh. work on my back because sitting and playing also is not so great for the back I mean, or any kind of work that you do by just sitting. Sure, sure. So that's one thing that I would do. Uh, I would work with the, the piece without the, the piano so I would just sit and try to analyze the piece and go through it in my head with, with sometimes with my eyes closed sometimes so I pretty much visualizing it um, another thing I would do is uh, uh, I actually discovered this not very long ago um, I have um, uh, so I, I was playing a concert when uh, during a time that I was nursing with my second kid 
and I did not take any caffeine in that time. And I was going to play a concert, a private concert. And I realized um, without caffeine, I actually functioned a lot better than with caffeine. Really? I used to always take. Oh, wow. I yeah, used to I, take I know that. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. always. Do you also experience the same thing? I I I like to drink a diet Dr Pepper sometimes in the morning, and it yeah, I probably I do better without that. So yeah, so uh, because what happens is that in, during the performance, the biggest challenge is being on that present moment. So we get nervous because we either think of the past or we think of the future or what's going to happen. So if you come to the present moment and you start as soon as you start playing, you, the nerves start to go away because you're really there. But bring the, the mind to the present moment um, is is more doable when you don't have any caffeine in your body. <laughs> I've realized. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. caffeine makes you more jittery, and you're not really. Uh, I mean, it's, it's it doesn't help so much. In the past, I would always drink something caffeinated before I played, and I realized yeah. I was playing quicker, and I was I wouldn't give justice to every single note or the space okay. between the notes even because yeah. the spaces between the notes is also important. You have a phrase, and then you breathe, and then you go to the next phrase. So you will get more patient when you're on the present moment. So then once I did that and I realized, oh, wow, this was actually, it's made a big difference. So now I just started doing that too. So no caffeine. Uh -huh. That's and then, like a healthy thing to do, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. I guess it's a healthy you, thing, yeah. Do you tend to speed up when you perform? Do you get, does the, the excitement get you to play faster or are you able to maintain a constant tempo you know, from your practice to your stage? Well, I mean, of course, not speeding up during playing. So, I mean, keeping a steady tempo with the within the piece, of course. But if, um, uh, of course, I will have a little bit of a, a energy that's that sort of from, comes from nervousness. So I try to channel it into giving energy back to the audience. So, okay. You know, okay. So it's not just too laid back. So it's a it's a good thing if I can channel it back. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. But yeah. I, I try to do. Uh, as much in the, as I mentioned, as much in the present moment as possible. And I, uh, I, I try to achieve that by listening to what comes out of the instrument at that moment. So listening to myself, like a third person outside of the piano. And I imagine that I'm sort of in the audience and I try to hear it through there. And that really helps me to express it in a much better way than, than by uh, memorizing in my head how I should be expressing. Then it's not really real. So the, the reason why also people, maybe they don't know, but they go to real performances, I mean, live performances, because they, the, the, uh, the nature of it is just you create something, you create art, as if like you're painting at the moment. And it's sort of, it's subtract and it sort of, sort of dissolves in the air. So that's, um, that's what makes it very interesting. So if you yeah. also can trust the moment, you can train yourself when you practice also to trust the moment, you, then you can also create something that that's not only by you alone, but it also has an interaction with the energies of the people who are also sitting there. So okay. that if, that every place that you play, every hall that you play, or every uh, people that you play for will be slightly different because yeah. it's, not, it's not like a robotic thing that you just- you just Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Stuff. But yeah. You, you feel the energies of the people, you exchange okay. it. That's, that's why the, I think the concerts have to keep going on, instead of doing on, online, you know, it's not- Right, a, right. You know, yeah, so yeah. If you imagine watching a concert online and if you've been to a real one where you are so impressed and but you can't describe what it was, it's the energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> reality. Right, that's, right. Why, that's why live performances still continue, in my opinion. And we don't have, you know, we, people also try to make robots that play like perfect violin or perfect piano. And this was around and um, my family will show me to, uh, to actually tease me. And I'll say, nah, they could never play like a human being. So but right, right. That's, that's the reason for it. We've tried to feel some sort of a human connection with the energy. Um, so that yeah. that's why we go to see something live. You know, it's very mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. interesting. So I gave a very long answer to, <laughs> to your question. No, it's great. It's a great insight. Uh, but basically try yeah. to be in the moment. I try to be as much in the moment as possible and, uh, and try to hear myself as I play. So okay. that's okay. the ultimate thing that I try to do. And then if I can go by myself somewhere else, then people will come along with me. But if I'm so, you know, worried about technique or anything, which you shouldn't be anyways, this music playing is not about just technique, it's about making music and sharing it with others. And so if, but if I am relaxed, then I can go someplace and I can take them along with me 
and um, I have come to this realization not very long ago, um, maybe two, three years ago, I was, I played a concert and um, a friend of mine came to the concert and she had never been to a classical concert in her life ever. She's in a completely different field. She was a professional horseback rider, actually. <laughs> <laughs> And she's never been to one. She came and she said to me, you know what, I've, I've never felt that um, in my life that I actually, you completely took me someplace else. So, and she doesn't yeah. play any instruments. I mean, I did not expect that from her. So when I actually heard that and I said, huh, then this is very interesting. Even somebody who has nothing to do with classical music came along with me somewhere else. So that's then that must be some, the effect that, that creates for people. Because I, I don't think yeah. about it myself because I, I'm the one who's giving the concert, let's say. Yeah. And when I heard it, then I, it sort of changed my perspective and it was really good for me. Then, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so then when I try to play, then I sit down and I say, well, okay, so if you can take pe people to other places, then you've done a good job. Then I just put that as a uh, sort of like something to reach for myself. Then I just yeah, yeah. Do that, and then I then it also makes me less nervous, and then I try to uh -huh. relax more so I can accomplish that. So okay, okay, <laughs> that's very good. I always thought like artwork, it's important like the sharing of it to experience it with somebody else, and then you know talk about it later. And I, I think you're the audience is very important. To you. You're taking them on a journey, and you're sharing this with somebody. You know that's a big part. It's not just in your head. It's not just you know. I don't know. That's a great, that's a great way to look at yeah. it. And feeling the energy of the audience too, you know, it's something positive to work with and you're trading things with them. And uh, that's, that's really cool. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And that's also why everybody who plays an instrument, they contribute in music in, in, in any way to the world because uh, you play and then you affect people in different ways or just by putting in the effort to practice alone. I think it's something that it inspires people and you do it after work, for example, you, 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 you show discipline then, I mean, all these things, to me, it's, uh, it's quite amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> one thing you think that it's, oh, it's a selfish thing, it's a personal thing, no, but the, the way that we are affects other people, really. So we have a responsibility of being the best people that we possibly can be on the way that we know the best that we can be. And then all these things that we do just affects other people through that, in my opinion. So, yeah. Then nothing goes to waste, I think. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, <laughs> it's there wonderful. Anything, yeah. Anything else you would like to add? Oh gosh. Um, Ask. Well, you have any anything else you like to know about me or my music or, you know, just. I, uh, I'm kind of curious uh, about your repertoire. So, I mean. You said you would like to know uh, Bach, and have you applied to the outstanding category or the um, uh, promising category? I believe I did the promising category, um, you know, but, you know, I've just been, I re retook up the lessons like two and a half years ago, and, you know, maybe someday I can go into the, you know, the other category, you know, right. too, but, uh, you know, like I say, I, I uh, you know, the Chopin preludes, when I got back into it in Chicago, I learned uh, that C minor, you know, um, kind of very, colorful dramatic and uh uh the the the, the kind of the, the dance like one in a major and uh you know but it, it's uh you know there's i'm just there are so, it's all so beautiful i just like to you know make the time and, and build up to some of these like you know challenging ones like like i say the i've done a couple things with the well-tempered clavier and uh the greek i'm working on that solving song and uh you know i think the dance things like chopin the waltzes or something i would like to you know learn some more in the future i did the the C minor, uh, C sharp minor. You know, I learned that several years back. You know, and I, I now that I have a little better technique, I think I could I could do it. You know, in a stronger sense. But it, it you know, it's just exciting. You just love the colors, and uh, it does take you. It does do good things for your mind, and uh, the interaction between the visual and uh, you know, I, I think about pictures in my mind when I'm playing some of these pieces, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, likewise when I'm drawing, I think about music sometimes. So it's it's uh, they complement each other, and. Uh, no, it's just it's a lot of fun, and you know, like I said, I want to. It's just this competition is a great thing. Hopefully, they'll connect with some other people who are, you know, are, are you know, the music's important to them, and they're creating in this, this hard time. This pandemic is hard for everybody, mm -hmm. but it's great. To, this is a great thing to be doing during that time, and uh, you know, continue. Hopefully, we'll have concerts again. There's a local university, Washington University in St. Louis, so that has these uh, concerts, and, and they're just beautiful. You know, they're, a lot of them are free too, but it's great being part of that audience and part of the musical community and hearing that. So. Uh, but yeah, I'm always I'm always open to hear something new. So if somebody, you know, I go to recital and I hear somebody playing something I've never thought about, 
you know, I, I might try exploring that on my, you know, own and then, you know, talk to the teacher about trying to learn it. Like the Rachmaninoff, I heard that, and I, that, that prelude, that kind of spooky one in C, you know, C sharp minor, you know what I mean? Just with the, the great chords. I mean, it, it evoked this feeling of this. I've never been to Eastern Europe, you know, and, and, and Russia, but, you know, just the solemn, you know, just the, the whole color. I could feel the smoke coming off those cathedrals and, you know, just, it was, it was great. So, um, so, you know, that's why I say I like, uh, I like mastering a piece. I also like stretching a little bit into something that's a little more challenging. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think they're both good, but so I'm, I'm, you know, passionate about it and look forward to learning a lot more. So. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thomas. Tom, sorry. <laughs> Thank That's you. all right. No, it's very yeah. nice. I enjoyed talking with you. And, uh, yeah. and I wish you all the best with this competition and the ones that you're going to do in the future as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Happy holidays. Merry Thank Christmas. You. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.